Hey crafters, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to make a fun autumn themed card featuring Lavinia stamps. Hope you enjoy. So I started with a piece of paper that's four and a half by five and a half inches. And using some scattered straw, distress oxide, I blended this over the top third of my paper. I wanted this card to have an autumn theme to it. So I used a combination of colors, which always remind me of autumn. And I just love how it turned out. So once I was happy with my scattered straw on the top there, I went in with my next color, which is spice marmalade, and I blended that into the scattered straw. Now my scattered straw is running out a little bit, you can tell. So I needed to go back in again and blend that in so that it's a bit darker. Now on the bottom third of the card, I'm going to add in some barn door distress oxide. And these three colors together really remind me of an autumn sunset. So once I've finished putting down the barn door distress oxide, I'm going to blend those three colors together until I have a nice gradient on my background. Now to add some more of an interest, I'm going to add some vintage photo distress oxide around the outside. Now the finished card size will be five by seven inches. So there will be another bit on the front, which I will show you in a moment. Now, once I'm happy with a little bit of that vintage photo, I'm going to take the circle masks from Lavinia and I'm going to use the outline piece first and just make sure that my, my sunset sun is nice and defined. So I'm going over the whole area with the same scattered straw distress oxide. But I want to leave a little bit of that orange, the spiced marmalade, peeking through at the bottom. Next I'm going to take the other piece of the stencil mask and I'll put that on top and add the vintage photo around it and that helps to make a more dramatic sky, which looks more like a sunset. And it's just beautiful in real life. Now once that's done, I'm going to take the other piece for the front. This piece of paper is four and a half inches by one inch, and I'm going to use the same two colors that are on the bottom of my sunset, so the barn door with the vintage photo around it and this will tie the two pieces together. And I thought it would be fun, instead of having it as one piece on the front of my card, to split the piece of paper into two. And I'll use this smaller piece for the sentiment. And you can see how well the two pieces go together since the same ink colors were used. So the main stamp I'm using on my card is the fairy called Brawn, and I'm using archival ink in black for this today. Usually I use Versafine Claire, but my Nocturne is running out, so I thought I'd try this for a change. Overall, I'm quite happy with the way this ink stamped over the Distress Oxide background. Not every ink is clear and crisp on top of it, distress oxides. So I'm going to use some brown archival ink for the tree branch stamp and I'm going to stamp that a few different times on the top of our scene here. And sometimes I used more ink than others so you get a good combination of dark brown and light brown branches which I think works really well. Now to make this more of an autumn themed card, I'm going to use one of my little leaves. And this leaf is from the Fairy Door stamp set. And I'm going to use some colored archival ink to stamp it. So I'm going to start with the fossilized amber. 
and then I'll use some spiced marmalade and some barn door as well. And I think this complements the background colors. And I decided that I needed some brown leaves in there too. So I'm going to add some of my, some leaves with the brown archival ink. And I think that makes it come to life once those darker leaves are added in. Now I added a few leaves falling from the trees as well. And then I thought it would be a good idea if there were leaves at the bottom so that Braun the fairy is actually sitting in a pile of leaves. So I just stamped the corner of that leaf image along the bottom. Now once I was happy with my background, I went to my little panel and using the same brown archival ink, I stamped my sentiment. And this is also from Lavinia Stamps and it says, free your inner creativity. So this would be a great note card to send to someone or a thinking of you card. It could also be a birthday card. Now to color in my fairy's wings, I decided to use some jelly pens and these are the glitter jelly pens. And I used some cool tones so that they would match the background of the card. So this is a gold glitter pen and I used this as well as a black glitter pen to fill in the areas on her wings. And I just love how this is opaque and it just draws in the eye and gives the fairy life. It's just gorgeous. These jelly pens are quite inexpensive and they come in such a wide range of colors that I just love having them in my craft room. Now, once I'm happy with the wings, I'm going to add a little bit of color to the fairy's hair. And for this, I use the crystal clear jelly pen. And this is the one that has the shooting star on the cap. And I'm just going to outline the hair just to give it a subtle shine, which makes all the difference and helps to make the focal point of the image the fairy. Now to fix that bit of the fairy that didn't quite stamp perfectly, I'm going to use my black polychromo pencil and just lightly blend over that area several times and no one would ever know that it didn't stamp perfectly. Now I'm going to use a five by seven inch piece of craft card and this will be the background on the front of my card. And I'm going to blend some vintage photo around the outside. And then I'm going to use some ground espresso and I'm going to stamp that same sentiment around the outside of my five by seven inch piece of paper. And this will help to add a bit of interest and texture to the background. And I just love how the sentiments from Lavinia Stamps can be used for more than just sentiments. So they work really well on backgrounds and in things like this. So now I'm going to hold up the finished pieces of paper on top of that background. And I just need to add a little bit more of that vintage photo at the bottom where those two pieces meet. And you can see it looks really nice, but it's kind of missing that sentiment border. So I'm just going to use that ground espresso again and stamp that sentiment at the bottom where those two pieces of paper will meet. Now I kind of eyeballed where this would be and I didn't want the sentiment to be even across the card so I just stamped it several times and then when I moved the paper down I realized I didn't quite eyeball it right so I needed to bring it down a bit more. But once that's finished I was quite happy with the effect at the bottom of the card. Now I decided to use some foam squares to pop up the sentiment on the front of the card 
So I just added those and then removed the backings and put that into place. And for the main panel on the front with the fairy, I'm just going to glue that and put it into place. And then once that's secured, I'm going to glue the whole thing onto my card base, which is five by seven inches. Now on the inside of the card, I didn't want to put anything too drastic that would take away from the outside of the card. So I just used Brawn again, the fairy stamp, and I used the lightest color of archival ink that I have, which is a fossilized amber. And I just put this on very lightly on the stamp and then stamp the image. So it's sort of like a watermark effect. And then I thought, if I had this stamped lightly, I could put a sentiment on top. So using that same ground espresso, I put that same sentiment on top of the fairy. And now you can see the finished card. And I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video inspiring. Be sure to subscribe so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. Have a crafty day!